Well, we got a call from a assisted care facility with people that have uh, traumatic brain injuries. And um, apparently there's a snake outside the back door of this facility. And because of the coronavirus, they're on lockdown. And they don't want their residents getting scared of the snake and demanding to leave and be able to go home. So they're like, look, you know, we know there's a coronavirus. We know there's a, a pandemic. We know, you know, there's a, a people are quarantined, but we need you here <laughs> to come catch the snake. I'm not going to be going inside the building here. I'm going to stay outside and apparently go around back and uh, see if we can locate the snake. Hopefully I will. I'm sorry that I really had to drag you all the way out here. Hey, I mean, that's what we do. And we have seen some bigger ones, but they don't do like these little bitty ones. They just be passing through, like going yeah. wherever they go. Jace, do you need something else, like protection? No, sir, I'm good. This is a uh, known as a Midland brown snake or just a brown snake. Yeah. And that's an adult. That is an adult. That's an adult. I mean, it may get a little bit bigger than this, but not much. And you see he's not even trying to bite. But uh, yeah, they don't really get a whole lot bigger than this. When they're born, they're about an inch long. And they're like really you can mistake them for a worm. Then, people basically. mistake them for worms. They're dark brown, almost black, and then they grow just a few inches bigger than this. Not very much. <clears throat> All right, so he was hanging out on an air conditioner unit <laughs> on top of it in the bushes behind the building, and it's just a little brown snake. And so, yeah, that's what we call it—a brown snake. Uh, it, it can also be called a decay decay snake um but sometimes that confuses people because they think you're saying decayed snake but it's d-e-k-a-y decays snake um or you can just call it the brown snake but because it's brown a lot of people mistake them for baby copperheads but they look nothing like baby copperheads now the good thing about me is i'll go a few days in between cleaning out my van so that gives you something to put little snakes in <laughs> when you don't have a box with you so he is going to go in the taco bell cup normally i would just release the snake back here at the property but they don't want the snake here so what i'm going to do we'll take him to my yard and we'll turn him loose and he'll be perfectly safe there <laughs> One of the worst parts about this call was having to drive through Atlanta, but because of the coronavirus, this is Friday afternoon rush hour in Atlanta. It's like a ghost town. This is the kind of rush hour I like. I'm going to get home pretty quick here and turn this little snake loose. Right now, he is just chilling out in his Taco Bell cup. Um, no, he is not wearing a seatbelt but he is safe and secure in my cup holder. 12 seconds later. Okay, okay, I got a snake loose. He's out of the Taco Bell cup, crawling across my dash, and, oh, and he's about to go. <laughs> he's going into the dash. All right, got him out, barely. Man, that would not have been good. Uh, okay, <laughs> I just had to pull over. Let me make something clear. Don't ever put a live snake in a Taco Bell cup without a straw because the snake uh, climbed out the hole and got loose. Um, preferably, don't put a snake in any cup. Uh, if you're a professional, which obviously I'm not, you would have professional snake equipment to transport, <laughs> to transport snakes in and um, Obviously, I don't have that. If you've watched my videos long enough, uh, you know for years, if I actually have an appropriate container with me, uh, that that's saying something. So uh, today, this is what we're doing. I don't think the snake can fit through the straw, but I'm almost home, so I'm going to keep a close eye on the snake in the cup. And uh, he's got plenty of air in here, so he'll be fine. 
and I will get him out of uh, out of this cup as soon as I can. <laughs> well, I made it home, and the snake survived his trip in Atlanta traffic and the Taco Bell cup. He's doing really well, and uh, this little snake, the brown snake, is the species that we get more requests to identify than any other snake in Georgia. This is a really common snake, very abundant um, in, in the right habitat. And the right habitat is most likely your yard. Um, anywhere you have vegetation and soil, uh, anywhere that you can have earthworms live or slugs or anywhere you can have soft-bodied insects live, this snake <laughs> will probably live there. So uh, that leaves very few places that this snake won't live. So uh, th this is an adult. This is about as big as he's going to get. You know, 12, 13, 14 inches, maybe somewhere in there. And this guy's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 inches long. So he'll get <laughs> maybe, maybe that much longer. That's about it. So this would be considered an adult. And really great snake to have on your property uh, because they do eat pests, which are slugs. Uh, that's definitely a pest and the good thing is it is completely harmless i mean this is a wild snake um yes he did poop on me <laughs> which that's a defense mechanism so uh, i'll leave him alone and not eat him but uh we're gonna turn him loose and i guarantee you there's a ton more of these snakes right here in these woods but i think i found a really great place to put this guy where he's gonna like it isn't that right fella <laughs> Let's go.